so Brooke, let me get to know you a little bit. What did your mom tell you about what we're going to be doing here? Talking, um, talking about phones in, in the classroom. Here we go. So I'm going to start just so that people who might be watching this know what I'm doing. I'm going to start with the empathy step. There's three steps. They have names. Um, the empathy step is where we're going to be gathering information from you about what's hard about that. And the empathy step begins with an introduction. And the introduction begins with the words, I've noticed that, and ends with the words, what's up and in between. I'm going to sandwich the unsolved problem that we want to be talking with you about right now. Here's what it's going to sound like. I've noticed that you sometimes have difficulty putting your phone away during virtual learning time. And now I'm going to ask the question, what's up? And now, Brooke, you're on. What's hard about that? In my opinion, it's just virtual school is kind of boring. But what I'm going to do next is a strategy called reflective listening. Brooke, it's where I'm just going to say back to you whatever you just said to me. Uh, it's a very good way for people to know that they've been heard. You said it's boring. I'm going to say it's boring. Then I'm going to add a clarifying question or statement like, how so? It's boring because a lot of the stuff they're saying, either I've known it before or I'm thinking in my head, what would I use to say? How does it affect me when I grow up? How would it help me? Especially me. So it's, bore, it's boring because possibly number one is you already know it. Possibly number two, you're having difficulty figuring out how it will ever be useful to you in real life. Yes? Yes. All right. Now, mom, Brooke has just given us a lot of information. But me, I like to be exhaustive. I like to make sure I know everything. Brooke, is there anything? So what I'm going to do is summarize and ask for more. Another one of the drilling strategies. All right, Brooke, here's what I know. Um, the, one of the reasons it's hard for you to put your cell phone away during virtual learning time is because it's boring and because the information, you're having trouble figuring out how it's going to be useful to you in real life and because you may already know the information. Is there anything else making it hard for you to put away your cell phone during virtual learning? Colleagues. What? My peers, my colleagues, people around me. Your peers want to connect with you. And are you mo you're texting them or you're talking on the phone with them? Texting. Texting. And texting with your peers is a good way to stay connected with them. Yes. Yeah. Now I'm gonna summarize again. Mom, I just keep summarizing until there's nothing else. Boring, um, the information is hard to imagine how you're gonna use it in real life. You know it already anyways, some of it, and you wanna stay connected with your peers. Is there anything else making it hard for you to put away your phone during choice, during virtual learning time? No. I, I don't like to leave the empathy step too quick. Anything else? I guess games are entertaining to play. Games are more entertaining. So you're doing games on your phone too? If I'm not texting somebody. God. You're busy. Um, all right. So not only could it be boring, not only might you know the information already, not only might you feel like the information is useless, not only might you want to be connected with your peers, you might also find games to be more interesting than what's going on in virtual learning. Yes? Anything else? Make yes. For you to put your phone away during virtual learning. No. All right. I'm going to leave the empathy step. Mom noticed I summarized four or five times. And each time, there was more. But now I'm convinced, if Brooke is convinced, still convinced, I'm convinced that there's no more. Brooke, are you still convinced that there's no more? Yes. 
Okay. Brooke, now it is time for the second step. But um, before we move on to the second step, I want to ask you, Brooke, out of those five concerns that you told me about what's hard about putting your phone away during virtual learning, which one do you think is getting in the way the most? Which one do you think is the hardest? The me not knowing how I'm going to use it in the real world. No kidding. Interesting. I don't usually doubt kids when they tell me stuff, but I was positive it was going to be staying connected with your peers. <laughs> no? Not for me. All right. So, um, we're going to roll with it because that's what we do, Mom. Okay? Just because I think I know which is the biggest doesn't mean I do. Right? But this is a very important theme, and that is the person who's the, the best source of information on Brooke is Brooke. Here we go. You love that, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the deal. The reason that I, Brooke, the reason I had you say which was the most important is because we're not going to be able to solve all of those at once. But which would you put in second place? The peers. Got it. So mom, here's what we would do. We would try to solve that first one. Um, and if the solution worked on that first one, we're done. If the solution didn't work on what Brooke told us is most important, we'd move on to the peers, right? But for now, it's that Brooke has trouble understanding how a lot of this information is going to be useful to her in real life. All right, mom, Brooke, it's now mom's turn to tell us what her concerns are. I want you to notice mom did an amazing job of not disagreeing with you, not interrupting you, um, not telling you that what she thought you were saying was wrong. Um, not arguing. She didn't do anything. She just listened, right? Now we're going to do the same because I am dying to know what mom's concerns are. Now, mom, adult concerns usually fall into one or both of two categories. How it's affecting Brooke, how it's affecting other people. But mostly what we're trying to answer here is the question, why is it important? that Brooke not be distracted by her cell phone when she's doing virtual learning. So now, mom, you're up. And by the way, here's the deal. Brooke, you may not agree with what mom is saying, but there's a bunch of stuff mom might not have agreed with, with that you were saying. And so all we're doing now is listening. Me too. Ready? Go ahead, mom. I'm concerned if Brooke continues, if Brooke is using her phone during class, she's going to miss the information. And um, just when she just goes and does a game, if the teacher gives a new concept, she won't know what the new concept is. And I'm concerned that when the new, when new information comes, she's gonna miss so much of it, she won't be able to catch up. And virtual learning is difficult as it is. And if, if she doesn't focus during her um, class time, then I'm worried about when it comes to doing the homework, I'm not in the class. I don't have access to help her with the things that she's doing. I mean, she's now in high school. High school is a lot different than when I was in high school. So that's my concern that I won't be able to help her with the information um, if she misses the important step. Got it. So I'm going to do the same thing now. I'm going to do the same thing now with your concerns as I did with Brooks. So I'm going to try to summarize them. I, I would actually say you've got two. You don't want her to miss anything. I'm going to add, you didn't exactly, I don't know if I should add anything. You don't want her to miss anything because the learning is cumulative. And if you miss it today, it makes tomorrow a lot harder. And if she should happen to miss it, 
she shouldn't, she, she couldn't, she can't count on you to know what's going on, even though you're an educator, right? Um, and Brooke, just in case you think you're at a disadvantage here because your mother is an educator, like how'd you get stuck with a mom who's an educator, right? Um, all parents, most parents don't want their kid to fall behind, right? Not just kids who are the children of educators. Got it? But mom, any other concerns besides that you don't want her to fall behind and besides that you won't be able to help her if she does? Um, just the habit of being a good student like requires you to focus on the work. And I want her to be a good student. Like, yeah, I want her to be able to focus on what's at hand and not be distracted. That that's, what what you, that's what you want. What I want to know is why do you think that's important? Because if she doesn't focus on work, that's going to um, extend to other um, avenues. Like what if she's driving and you don't focus? Like that focusing is really important to me. Like she's easily distracted um, mm -hmm. because something else pulls her attention away. In this instance, it's the phone. Got it. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I get the idea that you don't want her to be distracted driving but I'm gonna keep it to this okay. issue. So I don't wanna to go to like focus, the universe of focus, right? But aside from the fact that focus is important, it sounds to me like you have high aspirations for Brooke. Definitely. You, you are not aiming low with Brooke. You are aiming high. What do you think it is about her being distracted or poorly focused that could get in the way of your high aspirations for Brooke? That's what I want to know. I'm concerned about her grades. Like if she doesn't focus and she's in an um, accelerated program, if she misses any of the work now, so she's in the early college program, if she misses any of the work now, she doesn't realize that this work is going to show itself up again in a different way. So. I'm really concerned about what her grades are going to look like, how she, you know, if she's able to keep up um, with this work and, uh, and her just not being interested is also a concern for me. Brooke, you are doing a great job of just listening. So well done. Um, I, do have a, I do have a question I need to ask mom. Okay. How are Brooke's grades so far? We only have been here for two weeks. <laughs> and <laughs> so far, her grades are great. Like she has all A's so far for the two Brooke. weeks that Brooke. she right, has been a review of the work. Brooke, I knew that smile on your face meant something. Before the pandemic and before virtual learning or even during virtual learning during the pandemic, how were Brooke's grades? Her grades were, <laughs> her, her grades were okay. Oh, Brooke I, is surprised at that characterization. According to my standards, her grades were okay. Brooke is capable, in my opinion, of being a straight A student. Okay. Brooke was an A B student, and she also made a C last year. Yeah, it was a seventy nine, an eighty, an eighty is a B. Okay. Um, but um, <laughs> <laughs> my belief is that it is because of not putting your best foot forward. Yeah. Brooke, I promise you get to talk again in a minute. You get to talk again. We're not going to make you clam up. I can tell you are dying to talk. Um, so before these two weeks of virtual learning, Brooke is an AB student. Yes. Right? She, she's, she's, only an, she's only an ABC student by one point. But before right. this, Brooke's an AB student. Mostly B. Mostly, Mostly B. And you feel that Brooke is more capable than that. Yes, Brooke right. is Brooke. a straight A student, easily. Brooke, well now here's the interesting thing. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I hear that a lot. 
I would love, I'm just going to not do what I normally do here because I want, sometimes I go back to an earlier step, right? Brooke, I'd like to get your way in on two things. First of all, do you agree with mom that it's not just during virtual learning that you have trouble focusing, you have trouble focusing? No. I couldn't tell if that was a yes or a no. That was a no. That was a no. You do not believe that you have trouble focusing in general? No. Got it. If I did, then I would have ADHD. I'm sorry? If I did, then I'll be considered somebody with ADHD. Well, whatever they call it, I don't really care what they call it. I just want to know what's true. You don't think focus, I, don't, I, w I probably wouldn't call you ADHD anyways, because I don't really think much about diagnoses. But what's important though, is that if you do have trouble focusing, that we know about it, what do you think? Maybe Not so? Focusing. Not so. No, I do not have trouble focusing. All right. Do you believe that you are, have the potential to be a straight A student? I think everybody has the potential to be a straight A student. What about what you? you? What do you think is interfering with you being a straight A student? And by the way, you know, different parents have different goals for their kids. Some parents want their kids to be straight A students and some parents are good with AB. You've got a, you've got a straight A mom sitting next to you, at least into, now truth is if she didn't think you were capable of it, I'm betting that she wouldn't think you were a potentially straight A student because mom's worked in enough schools to know that some students just aren't gonna get straight A's. But your mom thinks you can get straight A's. What do you think? Well, I did in the eighth grade with straight A's. I'm not sure where she got. Doing virtual learning, I had an 89 and everything else were high A's. So I'm not sure where she got her seat from, but that never happened because I know I went to two ceremonies that said I was an A, B, C. And I really should have been an A student, but that's another conversation. Hmm. I'm sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> she just had Do to get you there. think you're a straight A student? Capable of being a straight A student. Do you think I'm capable? Uh, I no. want to know what you think. No, I don't. Do you aspire to be a straight A student? Is that something you want for yourself? No. Okay. no. You're good being an A, B student. I'm 100% fine with it. I think um, let's hear more about that because that is an interesting dilemma. Um, because certainly straight A's give you some opportunities that A's and B's might not. But Brooke, I'd love to hear from you your thoughts about being good with being an AB student? The reason why I'm good with that because school is hard, period. Okay, so to be one out of two people for us, because I'm going through to have A's and B's, is an accomplishment for me. No, I'm not saying I'm going to just slack and not do work and just take it. No, but I don't want to aspire for all A's and I don't get it, I get frustrated, I don't get it, I, I I um I don't want to go to school no more. You know, you know how people play sport. You want to win, but if you if you give your best, then who cares about the win? Because you're gonna be more upset about losing. That's how I that's how I think. But I just think if I if I am a a a a a and then I don't get an A, then that that does that's I don't want to feel that. No, that's not how I feel. And then also I don't think. Grades determine who, who you are as a person at all. I think we'd all agree with that, that grades don't define you. And I think I understand that you don't want your life to be driven by the grade. I think that's what you're saying. Yes. Is that a fair way of saying what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. You don't want to be so focused on grades that it's beyond the point of reason. I still want to enjoy life. 
You still want to what? Enjoy life. You still want to enjoy life. And in your view, shooting for straight A's would take some enjoyment out of life. All right. Mom, what's important about straight A's? But, the, but mom, let me ask you this. I'm wondering what you think of what Brooke just said and whether you want to make any, I don't, I don't care one way or the other, but what do you think of what Brooke just said in terms of not having her life be so driven by grades? I actually am, am in agreement with that. I don't want her to be in a place where she um, is anxiety ridden based on a grade. I also appreciate her saying that your grades don't determine who you are as a person. That actually made me very happy to hear her say that she's made up more than, you know, that an academic piece, because I think that's important for her to be a well-rounded individual and is not just focused on books, books, books. I want her to focus on family and friends. And I think that's important. Um, okay. The straight Do you want to say no yeah. worse than an A or a B? Yes. In any class? Yes. Yes. No yeah. more than worse, no worse than an A or B on any assignment. That too. I just classwork, any assignment, homework That's included. Four grades. Yes. And that means you're okay with straight Bs. Yeah, I will be okay with that. All right. And we've got it. it, it yes, definitely, if, especially if the homework is her work. Okay. So your expectation is no worse than. A's and B's on assignments and grades in a class and doing her own work. Yes. Brooke, you're sticking with, it is very hard for you to do assignments that you feel are irrelevant to your future. Yes. Here we go. I'm gonna to try to word this. The invitation begins with the words, I wonder if there's a way. I wonder if there's a way. I'm going to recap the concerns of both parties and then wonder if there's a way to get them addressed. Okay. I wonder if there's a way for us to do something about Brooke feeling that work that she's doing is irrelevant to her future. That's Brooke's concern. And also make sure that she's doing her own work and that she's getting at least A's and B's on all assignments and in every class. And then as I always do, I ask the kid, do you have any ideas? Um, no, but I have a suggestion. Ideas and suggestions, we'll count them as the same things. Go ahead. Okay, I feel like my mom is really, I think she should calm down because on tests, I can't cheat. I don't fail tests. So, is the class or really, does that matter? The 10% the in counts and then the 30% of the test counts? So I'm not cheating on tests and I passed the test. So what does the me cheating on a 10 problem on a homework really matter? All right. So you think mom needs to chill a little and not worry so much about the homework and what grades you get on that. What should she therefore be paying attention to? The test, cause that shows what my, what I read my grades and what I really know what to do. The tests and the final scores and, and the final grades? Yes. 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 I'm going to turn the uh, question to mom. Mom, you good with that? No. You're not. Go ahead. I'm, I'm because I won't, not using your own work could lead to your final grade not being what it should be. 
like I said, my mom thinks because I cheat on the homework, that's not my best work. I feel like that since I feel like spending, because last time we talked about that school shouldn't be everything, okay? So right. if I understand it, so I don't achieve out if I understand if I understand it. If I know I understand it, then I'm not gonna waste 45 to an hour plus to do it when I could just do the if I, if I understand it. If I don't understand it, then I might actually do it and try to learn it. But but most likely I understand it, then I won't spend the extra time on it. So I'm telling my mom, hey mom, okay, I'm gonna cheat on this, take my 10 minutes and ask to do something, because last time we said it's not all about school. So if I get it. Why waste time? Because it's all about school. All right. Your life. That's what you said, right? <laughs> but no. how, how do you know you get it if you don't practice the work? Be I know I get it because if I look at it, I know how to solve it. So okay. then if you know how to solve it, why wouldn't you just solve it? Because, to prove I'm not, because to why would I sit again for 34, 45 minutes out of my good time to do something that I already know how to do? So that's why your mom even cares about you doing your own work on homework because um, it could influence how you do on tests, not the state tests, that's tests in that class, and that could influence your final grade. That's why we're having this discussion. I think you and your mom have been in different places, and that's what the source of the conflict has been as it relates to what's important to be your own work and what's important for you to work hard on. Your mom is worried that if you're not doing your own work, that's going to make it much harder for you to get an A or a B in every class. Mom, am I doing okay? That's correct. Brooke, what do you think? I have been in school for more than nine years. I am pretty sure, pretty sure I know how to do work. And I, don't, and I personally do not think me cheating on a 10 question, if that homework assignment that really is not going to affect me in the long run, because half the stuff they're teaching us, I won't use in 10 years, really next year, to be honest, I won't use it. So how is me cheating on a 10 assignment going to affect me in the long run? First of all, if you continue to not do your work you may not get the skills because you will not practice what you need and while yes you're in you were in middle school and you could possibly remember everything in middle school you are now in high school and the classes are more difficult and require more information that you have to hold and if you don't continue to practice that daily you may not have that same um ability to just pull it out during testing time because the work is going to get increasingly more difficult than it was in elementary and middle school and especially what you don't recognize is you missed the portion of when you would have really would have seen how difficult work has gotten in um, middle school because we've been home so just even preparing for the end of the middle school and those uh, more rigorous testing that you would have had to do, you didn't have to do that. Um, but now you're in high school and you're, the classes are moving much faster than they moved in middle school. If you don't practice the work, it will eventually catch up with you when it comes to test time because you would not uh, be able to just say, oh, I get this. You're going to have to practice. And you need to be in the habit of you're practicing on your own so that you can know which mistakes you make. You can know which questions you need to ask your teacher. You can know if you get the work from someplace else, you won't know what you know, what you don't know, what help you need, and in which ways you excel, both of which are equally important. And that is the disconnect we have here. Okay. I do not need homework to learn. Homework actually does not help me learn. Homework makes it harder for me to learn because when it comes to the test and when it comes to other work, I overthink. That is me. I think you because you what do you mean you overthink? Explain. I that. second guess myself. When I me not using homework, 
it helps me because I say, well, I know this is how we did the first time. If I get it wrong, whoop to do. Usually I don't get it wrong. When I use homework, I overthink. I say, in the problem, da, 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 problem, da, 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 studying doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. And until it works for me, then I would do it consistently. But every time I study, I seem to fail. I fail at test when I study. Is that a coincidence? Brooke, you're saying I can slack on homework and still get all A's and B's. You're yes. also saying yes. I, I can slack on homework. Earlier you said that if you think that it's easy or irrelevant, you're unlikely to put the effort in. And then if it's hard, er, you are more likely to put the effort in. How about harder and also irrelevant? Harder and also irrelevant? Mm -hmm. I would cheat. Got it. Mom, what do you think of that? That's a concern that it, if it's irrelevant and harder, because she's saying everything is irrelevant. So now I know the classes are going to get harder. So then where, where are we? Right. So mom, I think, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think that if Brooke slacked on the easy stuff and it didn't affect her grade, you wouldn't love it but at least it's not affecting her grade. Agree. You feel that slacking on stuff that's either irrelevant or hard or both is gonna come back to haunt her and that's going to affect her chances of getting into a good college because you think ultimately it will affect her grade. Agreed. Thank well, you. What do you think? Again, I think we're over exaggerating. You, you both are thinking negatively. <laughs> Negative, like we're just assuming that I'm going to fail. Have I failed yet? No. Here's the good news. I'm not thinking anything. I'm just trying to say what I think you both are saying. So I'm, I'm neutral here, believe it or not. I'm just trying to say what I think you would say, what your mom would say. And sometimes I say what I think you're saying, just to make it clearer. But I am on nobody's side here. I'm taking nobody's side. I'm rooting for both of you, but I'm not in favor of either of you. I'm just trying to make sure that we are being crystal clear about what we're trying to solve here. And Brooke, what you're saying is, what, what you think of as negative is you saying, tell me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's going to come back and haunt me. I think my grades are going to be fine. Fair? Fair. Is that the thing? So, so really what this comes down to, I think we've settled on your expectation, mom, that Brooke will be getting A's and B's at a minimum, right? That, that's clear, right? And Brooke, you haven't said that you think that's unreasonable. You think that's unreasonable, A's and B's? No. So as it relates to grades, Believe it or not, we have arrived on the same page. That's progress. As it relates to how hard we work on things that are irrelevant, we have not yet agreed on a solution. Brooke, you feel that your mom is predicting the worst and you think you're going to be just fine. Yes? Yes. What do we do about that? I have an idea, but I don't want to throw it in the hopper because I've been talking too much. What do we do about Brooke feeling that she's going to do just fine if she slacks or cheats on the stuff that is irrelevant? Um, and mom, you feeling like it's going to come back to haunt her at some point. Yes. That's really where we, given that we tend to, we, you guys agree. A's and B's is the, is the benchmark, right? Yes. Really what we're disagreeing on, not, not we, I'm not in this, I'm, this is you both, is what do we do about Brooke's approach to homework 
and or material that she thinks is not relevant and therefore not worth putting effort into. That's where we're at. Yes. Aimbies, gone. We've now arrived at what we ultimately need to solve. Yes. What do we do about that? You so, feel wrong that slacking or cheating is going to come back to haunt her. Brooke, you feel that you're going to be fine. That's what we're trying to reconcile. So I wonder if we, if we, if we watch and see, if we watch and see what happens and if, and if it gets, if it's harder and irrelevant and she slacks on the homework and she still gets A's and B's, maybe mm -hmm. it's not a problem after all. Okay. Because I have acquiesced to. Well, I don't want you to say you've acquiesced. Well, I have realized I've listened to Brooke. I'll say it that way because that's what I mean. I've listened to Brooke where she's saying that what I thought was a concern really isn't a concern because she's doing fine it, um, when it matters what really contributes towards her grade, mm -hmm. which is the test. Um, and she does, she does fine on her test. So that, that's what she's saying. Now, I, and I did not realize that at first. I'm thinking about this is going to get you whatever. So I guess we just play it out. It's hard for me to say this. <laughs> we play it out. And then if she does not get an A or a B, not at the end of the semester, not the final grade, on any of her work, then we're back to we notice now that maybe slacking on homework or we'll see what the problem is. Maybe it's not homework, maybe it's something else. See, now what you said at the end there is not where I thought you were heading. I can make the promise that if my grades go under A or a B, I will not slack anymore. That's what I thought you were proposing, Mom. Mom is saying any assignment that is below or an A or a B will be a sign of slacking. Brooke, you're saying any final grade for a semester or whatever the grading period is, that will be the sign that you need to pick it up a little bit, right? So I said any homework, if she gets anything less than the ARB homework, anything she turns in. That's so what Brooke, I said. Right. But Brooke, <laughs> I don't is saying, that. <laughs> Brooke is saying, nope, the criteria should be my grade. Not on homework, my grade at the end of the grading period. Or every nine weeks is how we do it. Every, every nine, nine weeks? weeks. All right. How about four and a half? Four and a half weeks. So because if it gets to nine weeks, we won't know. Whenever the report card come out. Okay, whenever the report mm -hmm. card comes out. Whenever the report comes out. How, how often does the report card come out? They do a progress report. Progress report count? Yes. They do a progress report like every four and a half weeks. Brooke, you're good with the progress report being the criteria? Yes. If you're below an A or a B, on the progress report, mom, I got to make sure you are because mom, a minute ago, you were, you were on all assignments. You're right. I, I, you're right. It's pro because it, it, we did talk about it being maybe the little things in the middle don't matter. It was the final thing. So all right. I, you're right. So, and not just that. Sometimes the teachers do will have out for you. I might we're talking about something a, different. We're talking about that's something totally different. 79. We were talking about something totally different. But pro Here's I'm okay with progress reports because you're right. Everything, there may be some up, some ebbs and flows. So yes, Here's I'm okay what with we are agreeing to. Ready? Yes. You are not going to be terribly concerned about what Brooke does on homework. I know this is I know this is deep breath time. And by the way, here's the deal. The solution has to be mutually satisfactory, which means you both have to be good with it. Mom, I do not want you agreeing to anything that you're not good with. I'm good Brooke. with it. It's just, it, it's just, this is very different. <laughs> it's big. It's a big switch, right? And yet, here's the interesting thing. At the same time that the work is getting harder and your level of concern is going up, something else is happening. Brooke is getting older and her desire for independence is also going up. And so it's a very interesting balance, right? Between your level of concern going up and Brooke's desire for you not to be as involved with her schoolwork as you have been going up. 
So your big question, mom, is, is progress reports frequent enough for you to feel like you still have a tab on how Brooke is doing? Yes, if we do the, yes, every progress report, not, yes, yes. Every progress report. So here's what we're agreeing to. And mom, Brooke, neither of you should agree to this if you're not good with it. Don't, you're not doing this for me. We're doing this because we want a solution that has you guys not being in conflict anymore and getting this problem solved, right? I'm the facilitator. I don't, do I care what the solution is? No. Do I think in my head as we're agreeing on a solution, do I think this is gonna fly? Yes. And I think the solution you're agreeing on is going to fly if you both feel like it addresses your concerns, right? Yes, what, yes. What you're, what you're agreeing to is that if, if on progress reports, Brooke, you have any grade that is below an A or a B, that will be evidence of the fact that mom letting you slack on homework isn't going well. And then it will be time to revisit the slacking on homework if it's irrelevant issue. Yes. Mom, you good with that? Yes. Brooke, you good yes. with that? Very much so. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a solution.